telling them, if they don't want to worship, that's their problem. You're here as a facilitator. The ones that want to worship are going to worship, and the ones that are going to work on their public shopping list, <laughs> where shopping is a pleasure, that's their business. So seeking first the kingdom of God, verse 33 in Matthew 6, takes a complete transformation of the way you think. Because if we can be honest, most of us were seeking God last, if at all. If you can't say amen, say oh me. Because I was one. If you're an atheist, did I ever think about God? I mean, I was as far from God as you can get. And God says, now I want you to be close. And I want you to seek me first. I never, I never sought you first. I mean, it's a complete different way of living. I mean, did it, did, was it overnight? No, it was, like, it was like my grandmother said, force yourself. I literally began to pressure myself to seek God. I mean, to, I, I got to take him for his word. Is there prosperity? Will my soul prosper? Will my situation change? Will my health change? Well, things change because I seek God. But the only way to find out is to actually do it. And to do it means you got to take your mind off everything else. And that is a, a challenge to do that. It doesn't happen overnight. Like I've been telling people for years, you know we're in the end times. You know things are going to get difficult. When are you going to start walking in the Spirit? When things get rough out there? I mean, you think you're going to get it from one week to the next? You know, you, you'll be like the, the virgins, five were wise, five were foolish. Five were sleeping on the job. Then the call was made, he's here, and they're like, uh, I got no oil. Can you give me some of your oil? And the wise virgin says, hey, is it not enough? I got my own oil, go, go buy yourself. Are you with me? So people are just not prepared because walking in the anointing and walking in the presence of God is not from one week to the next. Oh, I kept Shabbat this week. whoop de doo Try another hundred of those. Or, or, or try a couple of hundred Shabbats like that. Yeah, try a few years. How long did the Lord spend with his disciples before he left? Three years, three solid years. And they were still denying him. I mean, they weren't even in good shape after three years. So you think you're going to be in good shape overnight when the you-know-what hits the fan? Because people are hoping, no, Lord, don't come yet. Yeah, because read the stuff that's going to happen before he returns. It's not going to be easy walking in the anointing and walking in the Spirit when you got all this stuff going on in the world that's pretty scary. The Bible says in Luke 21 that men's hearts will be failing them for fear of looking upon the things that are coming on this earth. Because what's God going to do before he shows up? He's just going to do a, you know, a big birthday party? He's going to shake and bake all these pagans. He's going to shake and bake them. And he's going he's to, he's everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Because that's the only way people are going to turn to him. And even with the shaking and the baking in the last days, they're still not going to turn to him. I mean, talk about stubborn, like mules, like the horse, like King David said. Don't be like the mule. Don't be like the horse. Don't be so stubborn. Some of these people are really stubborn. And I see people suffering and suffering and suffering, and they still don't get the program. It's like, come on, man. Seek first the kingdom of God. Because you messed yourself up for not seeking God. And you repented from not seeking God. You repented now to seek God. And if you don't seek God, what the heck did you repent for? Because somebody told you? Why did you repent? Because you didn't seek God. You didn't do what he said. Now you repented, you're going to continue doing the same dumb things that were killing you before? That was ruining your life and your health and your joy and everything else? Or are you going to get with the program? No matter what, no matter who. It doesn't matter what everybody else is doing. It only matters what you're doing. And, and, and you can play that blame game all you want to. Like T said, she made me do it. He made me do it. The devil made me do it. 
but you do it, you did it, and you ain't doing it. Does it make sense? So seek first the kingdom of God and his, not self righteousness. That's another problem. Self righteousness is keeping God's commandments by your own strength. Or not even keeping his commandments. There's no righteousness. Oh, Jesus is my righteousness. Great, he did everything, so you can stay. I mean, does that make sense, Tess? Makes absolutely no sense. What makes sense? That if I seek God, and I'm in the presence of God, and I'm in the power of God, and I'm in the Spirit, his words are now impacting a person that's in the Spirit. A person that's in the Spirit can receive spiritual instructions. A person that's in the flesh... can't do what God says. I cannot do what God says. That's what Paul said. I want to do it, but I can't do it. Because after, after seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, which comes from being in the presence of God, there's a righteousness, Paul said, that comes by faith, which is not self-righteousness. It's the anointing. It's the power of God. It's the presence of God that changes you from the inside out. And then notice what Yeshua said, all these things that everyone is after, which as I said, nothing wrong with wanting prosperity and to do well. I mean, what are we going to say? You shouldn't prosper, you should be in sackcloth and ashes and ride an old donkey or something? No. All these things that everybody's chasing, everybody's killing themselves for and each other, will be added to you as the prize of doing what God said. Does that make sense? Now, what's the problem? As I said, unless you get out of your carnality, you can't do what God says. Uh, go with me to Romans uh, 7. I love Romans 7 because that's how Paul explains it. And, and it took me a long time to, to figure out. Verse 14. For we know that the law is what? God's laws, what are they? If Father is spirit, what are his laws? Spiritual. God's laws are spiritual. But what's the problem? I am? His laws, his commandments are spiritual. I am? And I'm what? Sold under sin. Now he says in verse 15, I mean, this used to drive me crazy. It's like, well, who's on first? What's on second? For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that's what I do. If then I do that which I would not, I consent to the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, verse 18, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. Does that line up with what Yeshua said in John 6 and 63? The flesh profits nothing. My words, their spirit, and their life is the same God yesterday. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Verse 19, for the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that's what I do. Now if I do that, would I not? It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. I mean, the word of God is saying that spiritually we want to do what God says. We were created to be obedient, not disobedient like Satan. But there's, there's a war going on between our spirit being and our soul and our flesh, there's a war going on that unless you can win that war and you can defeat that in your own life, you will suffer as a believer. And the beautiful thing is that Yeshua won that war. Yeshua showed how to win that war because if you don't win that war, you're going to be one frustrated believer and you won't be blessed. And it has nothing to do with your salvation. Are you with me? 
now verse 24, he declares, he says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And then he says in verse 25, I thank God through Yeshua the Messiah, our Lord, so then with, my, with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. So there's this battle going on, and this is for every born-again believer. If you don't understand this battle, you haven't entered the battle yet. The battle is to fight the good fight of faith, to stay in God, to be in the Spirit. You will find this battle when you try to go for that. Your flesh will get in the way, and the devil will get in the way, and you will find uh, interference in your life when you go for it. Oh, Rabbi Gabe talks about loving God with all your heart. Yeah, try it, big shot. Easy to say. Try it. Try it for a whole day. See how you do. Then you'll be thanking me every week. Brother, I need to hear this as much as possible because it's easier said than done. The Word of God is not He did it and you don't do it. He did it to show you and I how to do it. Now it's your turn to do it. In other words, you got to do what he said. Yeshua said in John 14 and 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. Do what he said. So you got to enter this battle. And when we were walking our dogs, this neighbor, we said, Hello, he loves our little Yorkie, Samson. He asked me, Are you, are, Were you in the army? In the military? I said, no. But then the Lord reminded me, you are in the army. You're in the army of God. You're in the war. He th he, I, but I should have said to him, yeah, I'm in the military, but not your kind of military. I'm in a spiritual war. I'm in the battle. I'm in this battle every day. And you got to get in this battle every day to experience it. And until you get into it, I mean, it's just conversation. It's theology. Let's talk about God, you know. Now, what do you think the Greek and the Hebrew and this and that? Let's talk theology. While you're talking theology, you ain't doing it. Let's talk about the rapture. Are you pre-trib? Are you mid-trib? Are you post-trib? No, you're just giving me a headache. I'm trying to be in the spirit, brother. I'm trying to fight the good fight. Why don't you join with me? You know? Was Jesus from the tribe of Judah, but it should have been from, you know, endless genealogies. And I don't know if I'm Jewish. I'm not Jewish. I'm Jew. I may have a little Jewish blood in me. I'm not sure. Who cares? Your little Jewish body is going to go back into the ground. Your non-Jewish body is going to go back into the ground. Your physical, your physicality, pretty much me. The flesh profits nothing. I mean, do you need a whole Bible study for that? Repitan. The flesh profits nothing. The more you think about the flesh the less you think about God. Yay or nay? The less you think about the flesh, the more you think about God. Does that make sense? You have so many hours in the day, you're either thinking about the flesh or you're thinking about the Spirit. Yay or nay? And every day that goes by, oh, I had a lousy day. Let me guess. You were in the flesh. I had this beautiful day. Let me guess. You were in the Spirit. I was filled with joy. I was having a wonderful time. And then somebody came into my life and messed up my, the rest of my day. Because you let them. You let them intervene with your fight to stay in the spirit. Yay or nay? Somebody say, less flesh, more God. More flesh, less God. Chapter 8, verse 1. Because Paul doesn't leave us hanging. Oh, wretched man that I am, who's going to save me? 
How many of you know Yeshua is the Savior? What did He save you from? When Gabriel, this wonderful, beautiful angel, unbelievable name, amazing name, love that name, appeared to Miriam or Mary, what did he say to her? You're going to have a son. You're going to name him Yeshua, for he will save his people from, not in, from their sins. He will save his people. Who's going to save me, Paul says. Yeshua is the Savior. If the Son of God set you free, you are free indeed, not in theory. Indeed, you'll be a seeker of God. You will know to walk in the Spirit and the anointing, but you got to get in the battle. you got to start somewhere. What, what, what day should you start? Shabbat's a good day to start. Because if you get it on Shabbat, you might go for Sundays and Mondays and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. And then it's Shabbat again. You go, man, I love Shabbat. Why do you love Shabbat so much? Because I got brothers and sisters that are backing me up. Because they understand what we're going through. We're in the same battle. We encourage each other. We exhort one another when we get together. Come on, sister. Come on, brother. Oh, I had a bad day. It's just you were in the flesh. Come on. What else can you say? It's flesh or spirit? Spirit or flesh? It's faith or carnality? You're in or you're out? It's light or it's dark? It's good or it's evil? You're in, you're out. You got to analyze what got me out. What got me in, what got me out. You got to analyze. You got to think about it. You got to focus on it. You got to realize what's, what's the devil throwing at me? What's working against me? Because if it works against you, guess how many times he's going to do it to you? If he can get you out of the spirit, you think he's going to come back with the same th stuff? And it'll be like Groundhog Day. You'll be walking around the, the, the wilderness. Groundhog Dog is, in case you didn't know what Groundhog Day is, it's a movie that the same thing happened over and over. So we go through the same thing because the devil's going to throw the same stuff at you that got you out of the spirit to begin with or that prevented you from being in the spirit. He just reinforces what works because they'll find out what works. They're called familiar spirits. In other words, they're part of your family. Like they know, they know your parents, they know your grandparents, they have, they have a history on you. You know, here comes Tessa now, you know, we got a dossier, well, what's her, what's her thing here? What's the family tree here? Where can we, where can we come at them? Oh, look, we got, a, we, got a, we got an opening right here, look, 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 look what's gotten to them, you know? Like some people say, I have a family curse. No, you have a family devil. You know, my grandfather was an alcoholic. My father was an alcoholic. I'm an alcoholic. Guess who was in your family? Mr. Demon Alcohol. Look, we got a weakness here. She was an alcoholic. The mother was an alcoholic. Guess what you're going to be? Drink alcohol. Drink alcohol. Is that how it works? Yeah, you're an A. Somebody say, God has given me power over all the power of the enemy to tread on scorpions and serpents, and nothing by any means shall hurt me. So whatever my parents or grandparents or great-grandparents did, bye. See you around, devil. It worked on them. Ain't working over here. Kitchen's closed. Hotel is not vacant. No vacancy. I hung out the no vacancy sign. No, I'm getting, I'm getting none of those things that they had. You ain't putting none of those things on me because I'm not accepting any of that stuff in Jesus' name. Amen. There is therefore now, verse 1, Romans 8, no condemnation to them which are in Messiah Yeshua who walk 
not after the flesh, but after the spirit, who walk. Somebody say, time to walk. I walked in the flesh. I'm going to start walking in the spirit. Yea or nay? How else are you going to seek first the kingdom of God if you don't do this? Did he really mean that? You seek first the kingdom of God, my righteousness, all these things. So you can work your little fanny off getting things. Or you can work your fanny off seeking God. Yea or nay? I'm not going to say you're not going to have things if you don't work your fanny off for things. If you work really hard and your uncle dies and leaves you a bunch of money, you'll make a bunch of money. I mean, hard work is not even, a, is, is hard work a guarantee that you're going to make a bunch of money? That's not even a guarantee. I know plenty of hard workers that are, that are broke. But there's a guarantee with God. Because God said, if you do this, all these things will be. I mean, that's a sure thing. And God said, you can't do both. You can't serve God and mammon. Because it's going to take every fiber of your being to either seek God and be successful or seek money and be successful. And even if you spend every fiber of your being seeking money, there's no guarantee you're going to make it and be successful. Are you with me? But if you put every fiber of your being, if you love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and you put all your effort into seeking God, guaranteed you will prosper. I'll say that again. Guaranteed. By who? by the one who can't lie and the one who can back it up. How many of you can back it up? You will prosper. All these things, and not just material things. We don't need just material things. We need all kinds of things. And in order to get all these things, I mean, you know, that's, that encompasses a lot of stuff. We are needy people. We need a lot of things. And in the 21st century, we need even more because we see it on TV all the time. I need more stuff. Why? Because they got it. But it works. I need healing. I need restoration. I need a partner. I need a marriage. I need a house. I need this. I need that. How many know it takes a lot of effort to put all those things together if you're going to do it yourself? Yay or nay? I mean, you got to work on all these things. And when you're working over here, it doesn't work over there. It's like with my ex-wife. I'm working for things. You're not home. You're not paying attention to me. I can't go seek for money and pay attention to you. Some's got, if I pay attention to you, we're not going to live in a 3,500 square foot house with four cars and two boats. It's one or the other. You don't love me. Of course I love you, but I got to have some stuff. Aren't you happy with all the stuff you have? I never see you. Well, I got to be out there getting stuff so I can bring you stuff. And now you're not happy with the stuff and you're not happy with me. I can't win. No win situation. Now I start seeking God, and she says, you're not seeking stuff. I said, I'm seeking God. She goes, how do you know that's going to work? I said, because the Bible says so. I said, I'm going to seek God and see if he's telling the truth. She didn't stick around to find out. Esther came into the picture. Did you find out that it works? She's the beneficiary. Much smarter woman. She read the book too. She figured, okay, you go seek God. Well, she was a little skeptical at the beginning. Because I told her, right now, honey, I'm in between millions. And she said, yeah, sure you are. It's always the love of a woman, you know, so... Yeah, really supportive. 
She was so supportive. But at least she believed in the word. And she believed that if we, together we were God's seekers, that he would reward us. And, and, and the word of God is true. If you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be. Because he can't lie. We can lie. We can fake. But he can't. And he knows the liars and the fakers. Come on, Data. And I'm not saying you're a liar and a faker. You might be. I don't know. With that cute face of yours, who the heck knows what you're thinking about all day? <laughs> Mommy, what do you think? Is he the real thing or the faker? He's the real thing? He's thinking about God? Really? Man, Data, I'm so proud of you. Somebody's listening. That's why he sits in the front row. It's those back row people I worry about. I was a back row guy because it's the closest to the door in case I had to run out because of fire. <laughs> it's a back day. We got two doors over here. These are our exits. In case of emergency. We will be flying at a very high altitude <laughs> above the, what's the first realm, the first heaven. We'll be flying at a very high altitude. I heard Virgin Atlantic is selling uh, seats for space. It's a four-minute ride. They lowered the price. It's $450,000 a seat. You'll have four minutes pretty high up there. In case you're interested. <laughs> I bet they're going to sell a lot of seats, right? That plane's going to be full. So again, verse 1, very powerful verse. There is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Messiah Yeshua who walk, not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, for the law of the Spirit of life in Messiah Yeshua has made me free. Not from the law, from the law of sin. When you're in Yeshua, you're free from sin, not from the law, because His laws are spiritual. You can only keep God's laws when you're in the Spirit. Does that make sense? For what the law could not do, verse 3, in that it was weak through the flesh, God didn't get rid of the law. It doesn't say that. What did God do? It was weak through the flesh. God's laws could not be kept in the flesh. God's laws were given to Israel. He couldn't convince them to get out of the flesh. He couldn't, he couldn't get them to do it. Are you with me? So what did God do? He got rid of the law. Don't say that. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, condemn sin. Ta-da! Why did Jesus show up? To get rid of the law or to get rid of sin? And how did he do it? In the flesh. So if you understand how he got rid of sin in the flesh, you'll get rid of sin in the flesh. In other words, you won't have to kill yourself. A lot of people do do that. I can't take it no more. <laughs> right? Why do people kill themselves, Data? Because they're doing so well. Yeshua said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You know what the Lord was just showing me? It's not that everybody shoots themselves. They do things to themselves to die slowly. They kill themselves slowly. Cigarettes, alcohol, drugs. Poor eating. Are you with me? Why do people do such things to themselves? Because they're doing well? No, if you're doing well, you're not 
like one of my friends, he's a millionaire. He's worried about COVID because he's got money. He don't want to die. And then I see people that are broke. They're like, I don't care about COVID if I die. No kidding, you're broke. <laughs> you got nothing to lose. You got $5 million in the bank. Whoa, I got to wear a mask. I need the vaccine. I need three vaccines. Stay away from me. Why? Because I got money. I don't care if I die. Why? Because I'm broke. I'm better off dead. Hey, <laughs> like I used to joke around. I said, I got enough money to last me the rest of my life if I die in two weeks. <laughs> it was true at the time. <laughs> He condemns sin in the flesh. Somebody say he did something amazing. Yeshua did something amazing. He condemns sin, not the law. He condemns sin. What happens if I sin less? If you sin less, you'll think about God more. Yea or nay? He condemns sin in the flesh. How did he condemn sin in the flesh? The anointing, the Holy Spirit. Verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in who? In us. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now, you think you're going to get it done in one week, Data? Um, how long have you been working on cars? Years? Year and a half? And you know everything about a car now. You're still learning just to repair a car. Imagine walking in the spirit. Practice, practice, practice. Repetition, repitan. Every week. What do we talk about every week? This is our walk. This is our life. This when we leave the Mishkan. We don't leave God's commandments here. We take them with us. I've hidden your word in my heart that I may learn not to sin against you. I want to walk this way every single day. I want to walk in the spirit because I don't want to fulfill the lust of the flesh. And I don't want to sin. I hate sin. I hate the devil. And I want to be just like Yeshua. And I want to overcome in this world because I did think of suicide when I was doing horrible, just like every one of us. You know the devil puts those thoughts in your head. Kill yourself. Your life is so lousy. And nobody loves you and nobody's going to miss you. You know how that, you know how that stupid story goes. But when you're doing well, I want to live. Why do you want to live now? Because I want to preach this gospel. I want to tell other people. I want God to use me. I've never been this. In, 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 I've never been this joyful in my life. I feel joyful. I feel peace. I feel alive. I'm afraid of nothing. I'm afraid of no one. I mean, I'm kicking butt in my life for the first time. I mean, it's 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 wonderful to live in the power of God and the anointing of God. That you know God's in you. That God's with you. The wisdom of the ages. All El, El Shaddai, Almighty God, is in us and with us. And we're walking in that power now. We have the opportunity to do it. I mean, it is amazing that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk the way he walked, not after the flesh. For they that are after the flesh, verse 5, do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, what do they mind? For to be carnally minded is what? Does that make sense? Why is it to be carnally minded is death? Because the physical, our physical beings are dying. If you focus on what is dying, what happens to your soul? Even if your soul doesn't die, it doesn't, doesn't have life. Because the flesh is not the source of life. God is the source of life. So if I can take my mind off the flesh that is dying 
and put my mind on the spirit, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. But how do I become spiritually minded unless I learn what they didn't learn for 40 years? That man shall not... I must take my mind off bread and I must put my mind on God. And it, and, and it doesn't mean you got to get in your closet and become a monk. It, it means that you're going to be in the spirit and your mind is going to be on God no matter what it is that you do. In other words, you're going to learn to do what you do that you did without God and you're going to learn how to do what you do in God now. And it's going to take practice. You're going to fix cars in God. Amen? You're going to be the best mechanic because you've got the best mechanic inside you. God, what's the problem? And he'll tell you. You'll become a spirit-led mechanic. What do you do, Junior? Lab tech? You're going to be a spirit-led lab tech. What do you do, Steph? Insurance. You're going to be the best spirit-led insurance person. Yay or nay? Because whatever it is you do without God, you're going to do it in the spirit. Right, Jay? Sell cars in the spirit? Be a car dealer in the spirit. Be a real estate broker or manager, property manager in the spirit. I'm the best property manager around. Why? Because of my own power? It's not by my power or might. By my, the Spirit, says the Lord. I am now a great property manager and real estate broker because I did it without God before and now I learned to do it with God. How are you? Excellent. Why? Because I'm excellent or because He's excellent? He's excellent in me. And my job is just to stay plugged in. He's the best mechanic. He's the best lab tech. He's the best insurance agent. He's the best Carmen. There was a singer named Carmen, Christian singer. Remember Carmen? What happened to him? He crashed and burned? What? He got in an accident? He got cancer? Poor baby. He rusted out. But I think he went down singing? Hope so. But anyway, I want to die praising God, right? My deathbed, hallelujah. Thank you, Yeshua. I want, I want to die in the spirit. I want to die happy. Right? I want to do everything in the spirit, and I'm learning to do everything in the spirit. How long does it take? It could take years. When do I start? Yesterday. How do I get it done? Repetition. Everything, every day, every day, whatever it is you do, learn to do it in God. And figure out what the devil's throwing at you that's working, that's keeping you out of God, right? Because you'll keep doing the same thing that works, right? And then you'll know it. That like, there he goes again. He, did, did. He, got me in, he got me in my weak spot again. That's the weak spot. Lord, I confess my sin. You're faithful and just to forgive me and close that loophole, man. Close that door. Get rid of it. It's killing me. Amen? And he'll help you get rid of everything. Doesn't he do that? Does he want you to be in the spirit? Does he see his sons and daughters being in the anointing? Is he not going to help you be in the anointing? A branch that bears more fruit, he purges it and may bear more fruit. Right? In other words, if you're going in the right direction, he'll pat you on the head. He'll tell you how to get more fruit. And he'll tell you how to be more in the anointing. And if you're playing games, it's like, Because the carnal mind, verse 7, is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So, they, so then they that are in the flesh, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. When, when am I pleasing to God? When I'm in the Spirit. When I walk in the Spirit. When is God not happy with my walk? When I'm in the flesh. I'm not happy when I'm in the flesh anymore. Anyone not happy being in the flesh? 
I'm not happy when I'm in the flesh. I'm happy when I'm in the spirit now. Great minds think alike. Two cannot walk together unless they're in agreement. I agree with God. He's not pleased. I'm not pleased. Father in heaven, I want to please you and I want to be in the anointing all the time. I want to be in the spirit. Whatever it is that's stopping me, that's bothering me, please deal with it. Show me how to get out of it. Show me how to walk the way Yeshua walked. And yes, let me be an overcomer. Let me be light. Let me be salt. Let me boast about you, Father, in heaven. Let me tell everyone. You know, let me just, let it shine on my face. Let people see my face. Let them just see the joy and the peace, the shalom. Let them see it. Let them, let them, let them feel it. You know, like when you're around people that, that make you feel good, and then you're around people that make you feel terrible. I call that either they have the anointing or they have the annoying. And when you're around the annoying, it gets like, ugh, like you need a shower, you need a bath after you're around those people. Disgusting. But you notice how Yeshua attracted everyone? For you guys that can't get women? Did you see what the women did around him? When was the last time you had a woman weep at your feet and use her tears to wipe your feet with her hair? You can't even get them to get you a cup of coffee, Data. <laughs> so for you guys that can't get a date, be like Yeshua. You'll be very attractive. All of a sudden you see all these women hanging around you like... Take a number, please. No pushing and shoving. <laughs> Plenty of anointing to go around. Let's stand up and honor him, please. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's not for married men, okay? <laughs> Don't get any ideas, Bill. <laughs> this is for single men only. Hallelujah. Father in heaven, we praise you. We thank you. Bless your holy name. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for delivering us. Thank you for showing us the way, the truth, the life. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Father, that the truth is setting us free. Free. Set the captives free, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing for each and every one of us. Thank you for your words. Thank you for your truth. Thank you that it falls on good ground. Hearts that understand, hearts that bring forth much fruit. Thank you, Lord, for every soul that you've sent to the Mishkan. Thank you for those that are, that are listening to you, Lord, and they're putting into practice what you said and reaping the rewards. Thank you, Lord, for rewarding each and every one of us that diligently seek you. Bring more people to the Mishkan, Lord, that are hungering and thirsting for righteousness, for the way, the truth, and the life. Deliver our people from religion. Deliver our people from traditions. Deliver our people, our friends, our co-workers, our neighbors. Deliver us. Deliver us. Keep us from evil. And Father God, we bless you and thank you a million times tonight. In the name above every name, the name Yeshua. Hamashiach, the world knows him as Jesus the Christ. In his name we pray and the people of God said, Amen, Amen. amen. Please give the Lord a big hand. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching on the internet. The, we're going to close in worship. And the bedtime Shema. We thank you. We praise you, Lord, because you are a God who keeps his promises. Deliver us from our sin and actually show us how it's done. And we thank you, Lord. 
get ready to dis dismiss uh, the service, I want to encourage everybody to stay, break bread with one another, encourage each other to love and good works, and uh, enjoy this Shabbat, this time of fellowship with our Heavenly Father and one another. Um, thank you to every single person who supports this ministry with tithes, with love offering, with the work of your hands, with the love in your heart. We are truly so grateful for whatever, whatever the Lord puts on your heart to give from yourself. We know that this ministry is entirely supported through voluntary, uh, voluntary contributions, and we're grateful and we're, we're thankful for your obedience. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to be here tomorrow morning. We hope you join us, and uh, as Shabbat will continue. So in the meantime, why don't we say the bedtime Shema together? We always want to make sure that our hearts are in the right place so our prayers will not be hindered, so that they will rise as a sweet incense to the throne of our Heavenly Father, okay? Say it with me. Sovereign of the universe, before I sleep, I forgive all who have angered me, upset or sinned against my honor, body, work, or all that's mine, whether willful, careless, accidental, purposeful, or through their speech, by word or by deed, in this world or other worlds, let no one be punished for my wrong. May it be your will I not sin again towards you, that I may not do wrong in your sight. May any wrongs I've done be erased in your great mercy, not through any punishment or pain. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, be acceptable before you, my Redeemer and my Rock. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Malchut Olam Vaed Blessed be His name whose glorious kingdom is forever and ever. Amen. We praise you. We thank you, Lord. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. We'll be here in the morning. We hope you'll join us. In the meantime, Laila Tov.